Hey everybody, as you probably know by now, I'm Ash. Welcome to the last segment of our Create Your Own Comic Monthly series, where I'm going to create a comic page from start to finish using the lessons from the last half a year of classes. The only things I did beforehand were the character designs and concepts so that I knew where to start. Um, all the art for the final page will be done on video in a few different clips. As you can see here, I have some turnarounds of the characters I'm going to be using, as well as some common expressions. I also decided to, here's the other character. Their names are Osito and Dorvito. Don't come at me. Um, I also decided to write down a couple of the places that I wanted to go and I established the main area they'll be in, at least for the very beginning, which is at the edge of a forest with a river. Um, here I did some relevant props that I'll need if I do continue the comic, uh, which also helps establish the style of this so I don't have to think about it during sketching. So I got the idea of a bear who lost his paw, and so now he doesn't know how to get food. Uh, so he's, because he's just used to eating salmon. A bird feels bad for him and slowly learns his tastes and finds berries and clovers and dandelions and ants that they can eat together and they become friends after that. Obviously for this video, I don't have the time to do the entire comic, so I'm just going to be focusing on the very first page. So here's where I went through my thumbnailing process. I just jotted down what I think the, the logo should look like because I'm just extra like that, I guess. I don't know. I do a lot of comics, so deciding what the page should look like was relatively easy for me. Um, I knew I wanted a big first panel, so you could see even from the very beginning, I kind of had that idea here. Um, and then even whenever I got to the second one, I didn't abandon that idea. I just added a couple extra, like more interesting panels. Um, I wanted to show the bear trying and failing to catch a salmon. And I wanted to do that in as few panels as possible so that I could have the bird on the first page as well. So I went ahead and I took this thumbnail and I blew it up so that whenever I get to that part in the sketching, it'll be easier for me. So I can see the bird is sad here. <laughs> um, and I've got hunger lines coming out from the bear here because he's so hungry because he lost his paw and now he can't catch salmon. So all that to say, I did a lot of stuff and now let's get going on the actual process. So that big first panel is probably going to take up about this much room. Yeah, somewhere like that. And I have a couple smaller panels here, which I'm going to draw slightly over the big panel because that's almost a comic style of mine, if that makes sense. I always like to do the overlapping panels, almost like it's a scrapbook. I know this bottom one is another big panel, but I need another smaller panel here as well, which is where that smaller bear is gonna be. So I'm sketching with a drafting pencil I really like. Um, it is an 0.5 Pentel, uh, but it doesn't matter what you sketch with as long as it's easily erasable. Obviously these panel lines aren't going to be perfect because I'm just eyeballing it right now, but that's okay because you just kind of need to know where you're going. So I know there's going to be a river here-ish. It's going to come down like this. Trying to keep the fluidity here. I know if I do decide to add in the logo, it'll be around this area. So I'm just kind of marking out this spot so that I know not to do anything over there. I know that he has a sort of a sigh here. And I can start sketching in. Little bear dude, or Osito. Since I have these pages already, it's I don't have to make any character decisions while I'm going. I can just focus on sketching. But if you come up with an idea while you're sketching that you like better than your thumbnail, do it. You don't owe anybody anything. 
forgot I had a little panel right here. I'm gonna make sure to keep all the important information for this panel in that area there. So we've got a little bear trying to swipe the river here. He sees all those tasty salmon and he wants some, but he's having to balance himself on the missing paw. So just his arm and he ends up tripping here. And he's not used to it. And I want to make him a little smaller in this panel because I want to show that he looks kind of alone. I don't know where his family is. I don't know why this is so sad, but I'm an artist and I don't have to explain myself. And neither do you. And then here I was going to make him look even lower because he's further away. Because he's just giving up. He's going to sleep. Got to carve out the tree here, roughly in that area, so that I can draw. And with this, I have most of the main beats. So I'm going to go ahead and start adding a few other things here and there. Like the fish, I could probably get that in panel and frame for you. Main things to remember about sketching is you do want to, in general, use as few lines as you can and you want to start as light as possible. I always heard the, oh, you always got to sketch light. I never took anyone seriously until probably just a few years ago. And I realized, oh, they meant it. It makes a world of difference when you start light. As you can see, I usually like to kind of define the background elements first. I, I guess it's so that the characters feel more fully incorporated into their environment. You don't have to do that. That's just what works for me. So I'm going to use some rocks here, grass, but mostly the focus is on that river, which is going to be here as well. Bring these rocks from the floor. I already forgot what Dorothy looks like. But that's why you make your reference sheets. This character I thought was normally kind of a, I don't know if angry is the right word, but it also is kind of the right word. Just normally doesn't care that much, but he sees this bear and has a lot of empathy. Just feels bad, wants to help. Now that I kind of know where all the background elements are, work on defining the foreground elements a little bit more. Like I know I want his ears colored in. And he's got a big snout. And he's pretty fluffy. Make him look a little tired. He's been <laughs> he's having a hard time. Let's go ahead and get some of these fish a little more defined. They are pretty simple looking because I wanted the whole style to be relatively simple, but we still got to get those simple lines on so that we know where to ink. The ones that are closer to the surface, surface I'm going to draw mostly without any distortion, but the ones that are further away are going to be kind of distorted. I'll, I'll decide a little more how I want that to look when I'm inking. Basically, while you're sketching, you're just, you're sort of making visual notes for yourself for how you want it to look in the end. Okay. I'd say this is about sketched out now. Obviously, I could go a little further. Um, but this, for me, I know is going to be roughly enough to be able to ink. Uh, you might need a lot more guidance. That's fine. Um, sketch as much or as little as you want. Uh, usually, at this point, I like to do something else for a while so I can come back and look at it with fresh eyes. 
make any touch-ups, and then continue inking. Uh, I don't think I'll have to do that for this because it is a pretty simple style, but it is important in general uh, because you've been looking at your paper and your device for so long at this point that you might not notice anything is wrong unless you walk away. Um, a trick I also like to do sometimes is to flip my paper and hold it up to a light source so that it kind of refreshes your eyes so you can see it flipped. Just do your best to give yourself enough guidelines to work with, and I think that's pretty much what I've done here. All right, now that we're finished with the sketching, catch us in the next video for whenever we start inking, which will be a little journey for us to take together. So don't miss it.